Arrowheads are included in a lot of the Grim cards for a really good reason. Bows are not that difficult to manufacture with a little bit of skill, and having a quality head like this drastically increases your chance of getting game. Now, when most people think about a survival bow, especially one that you're going to make in the field, everybody wants to go out there and start chopping down trees and making bows from staves. Well, this is one I just finished. So this is a fire-hardened hickory longbow. This took some time and this took some doing. This is probably more than you're going to be able to do with minimal gear, especially if you're just using survival cards. So today we're going to be using just the tools on the survival card and material that is pretty easily accessible, especially in an urban situation. So we're going to be making a bow from PVC. If your primary concern is wilderness survival, why are you making a bow with PVC? Well, first of all, it's a good way to practice. If you're not an archer already, this is going to let you learn how to shoot. It's going to let you learn how to make arrows. You can learn form and all of this is going to translate over to a proper bow. So PVC is not just found in urban situations. Uh, there's a lot of rural areas where you can encounter cabins or old houses and you might be able to find a piece of PVC in there as well. But don't forget, you can also make one of these bows ahead of time. So this is not going to be the best performing bow you've ever seen, but this will get the job done, absolutely. So you can practice with this and you can make several of these up. Keep them in your bug out locations. You can keep this in a cabin. You can keep this in your bug out vehicle. And you're always going to have a multifunctional tool that's going to help you take game. We're going to be building this bow today using a survival card. I've got a little sandpaper here in my wallet and a piece of paracord. Now I'm using the Bob Hansler card but any of the cards that feature a saw is going to work for this. Now, if you did not have a card with a saw on it, what works excellent to cut PVC is Kevlar line. Kevlar line is something I carry in my emergency kits. A lot of the cards have indentations where you can wrap cordage around it. Kevlar line is multi-purpose. You could fish with it. You could craft with it. But when you're trying to make a bow, it cuts through PVC like butter. This isn't something I need, but for your benefit, I'm going to be taking a Sharpie marker and just putting down all my marks. Now, this is replicating. You're in an emergency situation, and you have to make a bow, and you happen to have material. If you're pre-making this, or if you're more interested in learning archery and you want to use some of the arrowheads on the Grim cards, don't limit yourself just at these tools, especially on the first one. Uh, in addition to that Sharpie marker, some kind of ruler. This is a cable saw. So this cuts tile, this cuts PVC. This is pretty freaking slick. So a couple items like this. If you're gonna be making a couple of these bows, which you probably are gonna be doing that, make them on a bench setting, make them right, and then it's easier for you to duplicate that in the field. So if you're just trying to make a bow in the field, I would try to get one between chest and chin high. On this 10 foot stick of PVC, I'm gonna find it marked center. So this is gonna be a five foot bow. Without a tape measure, I'm going to use this paracord to get the total length of the pipe. Then I'm going to fold it in half, and that's going to be my center. So here is our cordage folded over, and right here is where we're going to make our cut. Now, because we're trying to do the best job we can, we're going to want to keep everything nice and square. So we're going to use this, this lettering on the pipe. So this is our straight line. And we're going to have this face towards the target. So if we were looking at our bow dead on, this is going to be 12 o'clock. Now we're going to come down about the width of your finger. And I'll make a mark for you here. So right about here. We're going to make a mark on both ends and we're going to kind of angle this down a little bit. So if we're going to call this 12, then we don't want to go past halfway. So we want to 
take this deep enough where the string's not going to pop out when we draw back. But if we cut this too deep, then we're going to weaken the tips of these bows. So kind of like a frown, that's a little bit less than a 45 degree angle if you're using tools at home. But you can just kind of eyeball it, make yours look sort of like this. We're going to do both ends the same. So to make this notch a little bit wider so our string is going to fit, I'm going to take the saw blade and just put it in backwards like this. So this is going to be the top. I'm going to fold it in the sandpaper. So once you can get that to pass through and you still need it wider, you can just start stacking tools. So I'm going to put the knife and the saw together. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in paper. I'm just going to keep doing the same process until I get it as wide as I need it. So that ended up being like three or four folds, plus my saw, plus the knife. We'll test fit it with the paracord here. So that's about the angle we're looking for. That's a little tight, but that's good enough for now. Paracord is not the best bowstring because it stretches so much. So you're going to want to tie two loops. I'm going to go with a figure eight knot on each end. I would tie this about four to six inches less than the bow to start with, but this is going to stretch and you're going to have to take one side and continually tighten it. With a real bow string, the string doesn't stretch, so it's a little more scientific, but when you're using an improvised cord like this, it just stretches so darn much. So this is still a little bit high but this material is still gonna stretch quite a bit. And unfortunately, there's no real way to do it other than tying knots and testing it. This is a PVC survival bow in its most basic form. We didn't use any heat. We used just minimal tools that you can carry with you every day. And this is still a completely functional bow. So the performance on this is not gonna be completely overwhelming here. Let's check the weight on it. This should be around 25 pounds. So I got 27 on these, so there's a variance. I've got these that are 26. I've built 28, so a lot of this is gonna depend on your draw length and your material, but you can easily increase the weight on these. So these are fiberglass driveway stakes, and you can fit up to four of these into a three quarter inch pipe. Now with this one, I've kinda of got it tapered. So I've got full length rod, and then they start getting cut down and tapered. And the center section, which is where the handle is going to be, is going to be the firmest. Now, I've done this in a lot of different videos on my own channel. And I've got weights from 35 pounds up to 42 pounds just by stacking these fiberglass rods. If this was a survival situation and you were just trying to make an improvised bow, you may not have fiberglass stakes like this. But you could certainly use uh, fishing rods. You could use tent poles. You could use any type of green stick that's going to fit inside that PVC and give yourself a little more strength. So in addition to weight, there is a lot we can do to this bow. We can establish our center so that we're always holding this D bow in the same spot. We can work with an arrow rest so we're not shooting right off our knuckles. But for something that you can just throw together with minimal tools and minimal materials, this is definitely a good way to get started.